Welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development within the Biomedical Research Education and Training Department of the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. My name is Kate Stewart. I'm here today with Aaron Henry, um, who was in the Neuroscience Department when you were here. So tell me a little bit about what you did when you were here at Vanderbilt. Yeah, so I was here 2001 to 2005, and I worked in Ken Catania's lab. And uh, Paul Morosco and I were his first graduate students. So it was really fun to be working with a young faculty uh, who had done his postdoc at Vanderbilt, but was kind of, you know, really immersed in and very passionate about the work he did. And so that was a ton of fun. We worked with exotic, strange animals, and uh, I was just visiting him today. It, it takes me back. It was so much fun. And, um, you know, his enthusiasm was always very infectious. Awesome. So tell me what you did after your time at Vanderbilt. So I went from Vanderbilt, my, my husband was also doing medical school uh, at the same time, and he had matched in radiology residency at WashU. So I uh, looked for a postdoc at WashU and joined a, a large primate lab um, doing in really interesting research, uh, sensory integration, both som uh, somatosensory, vestibular, and visual processing. Um, but it was a very different type of lab than what I had been accustomed to, and it was not a great fit, and, and I knew that almost immediately. And so part of that kind of difficult experience of that first year of postdoc was what led me to think about alternative careers. Okay, so tell me what you do now. So now I work at Genentech. I'm a senior medical science director for the ophthalmology team on the U.S. Medical Affairs Group. So what that is is within medical affairs, uh, we have molecule teams and I'm, I've got a, a team of individuals that are working on uh, a product that's in the pipeline, so it's in phase three clinical trials for a disease state that currently has no, no treatment options. So we're working on the trial program, we're working to communicate the work that we're doing, so we're publishing, presenting, talking with uh, investigators as well as people that are in the field that may not uh, work with us but are interested in what we're doing. So it's a lot of scientific exchange okay. and also furthering clinical research. And daily activities, like if someone followed you into work, what would they see? If they followed me into work, well, so the first challenge that I have is I work with a team where half of the people on my global uh, group are in Basel, Switzerland. So if they were with me, they would be sitting at probably at my home office desk for the first hour um, because we have early morning meetings. And so oftentimes if it's a 6.30 or 7 a.m. meeting, I will have my coffee and take the first call from my house. Uh, or I'll, depending on whether or not I have to be sitting in front of a screen, I might be commuting into work mm -hmm. during those first calls. And then uh, we do like to meet a lot at Genentech. So I have a lot of project team meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings, and it's making sure that the team, because um, we'll have, you at any one time, 20 to 25 projects going on. Um, you know, and each team member may be responsible for a variety of different projects. So I'm yeah. making sure that the projects are advancing, that if they need additional budget, additional resourcing, um, that I can be there to advocate uh, on behalf of, of their project to our leadership. Okay. And that's a lot of what I do is making sure that their needs and their projects are, are moving along. And if we need more resourcing, we need something else that I, I'm the one that's going and, and asking for that money okay. and, and coming up with that, that rationale. So skills that you have, um, interests that you have, how is this a good mesh, a good fit? Yeah, so, so in this current role, I mean, a lot of it is communicating because um, I develop the strategy with my team. You know, none of this is, is something that I do in isolation, um, but I'm having to advocate internally for the money and the resourcing that we need, mm -hmm. and I have to have a good pitch. Um, and I'm competing against other programs within the company, so not only do I have to have a good pitch, but I have to justify why they should be giving us budget versus other really you know, mm -hmm. good studies as, and, and research programs as well. Okay. And then I also have to communicate with the external community. So be it clinicians who are trying to understand how our data should be integrated into their clinical practice, or societies that are coming up with you know, new consensus documents, writing new guidelines for, for management, uh, trying to make sure that they understand how our data should be integrated into that conversation. Sure. And then 
also with just the researchers that, that are working so hard enrolling patients in our trials, making sure that they understand why they're doing what they're doing and that they also get to hear the study results or participate in analyses that we're doing. So a lot of it comes down to being a good communicator. Mm -hmm. And I think that I have honed that skill through the many years that I was a medical science liaison before I moved to headquarters and took on the medical director role. So it, it is, you know, through present, I mean, many, many presentations, um, you know, a lot of writing too, because yeah. we, we still publish uh, and we present. Um, but all of those things are really about translating information um, to an external community. Yeah. Um, so I know a lot of students are interested in jobs, especially jobs communicating science. Um, what are some things that maybe they don't know about this career field that would be important for them as they pursue it? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of confusion about what this role is mm -hmm. and what it's not. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes people are concerned, are you a super salesperson? Are you right. selling a drug? And, and really that's not um, in any way the job description of medical affairs or medical science liaison. There's um, what they call firewalls, where there's clear delineation between sales and medical affairs. And that's done in order to allow us to talk about research, things that are beyond what might be captured in a package insert, which right. is really what a, a commercial person would be, be talking about. And the goals and the, the uh, measures that are used to kind of say whether or not I've been a productive member of, of the organization are not associated with anything on you know, selling drug or return on investment. It is things like, um, for goals for me is, um, you know, ha having projects moving forward, hitting deadlines on uh, enrolling a certain number of patients mm -hmm. within a, a window for a study in order to keep it on time, or to um, uh, have a certain number of publications, you know, those sort of deliverables. And as an MSL, again, it's about facilitating exchange of information. And also, you really are the liaison, connecting the uh, researchers in the community with the appropriate people in house and making sure that you know you're advocating for those research ideas because um, everybody needs the champion you know even people in the external community that have brilliant ideas need somebody to kind of help them uh, move that along and oftentimes it is that MSL that's able to facilitate and make those connections awesome so tell me if there's a current graduate student or postdoc who's interested in your job what would you tell them to do now to sort of prepare themselves even for the job market or, or the job itself? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest challenge is getting exposure to presenting and interacting with people mm -hmm. and taking that opportunity at conferences, either by doing presentations or posters. Um, I, and oftentimes the graduate school offers the opportunity to present your data in front of others. Yeah. And all of those experiences help because very few people are good at public speaking and are good at talking to people just right out of the gate. It's yeah. Uh, a skill like any other and practice certainly helps. Um, so that's something that certainly I've evolved in, in being a better presenter. Uh, I also remember, so when I was at Vanderbilt, and I don't know if this is still a program that exists, I did the faculty preparation program, which gives you a graduate teaching certificate. Mm -hmm. And as part of that program, they filmed me while I was presenting, and then they, they came back and kind of critiqued my performance. And those sort of things of seeing yourself, you know, it sometimes is really difficult to, to watch yourself present, um, but you learn, and you learn kind of how you hold your body, mm -hmm. and you learn kind of what your nervous tells might be. And so seeing that, um, you know, it, it gives you more confidence, yeah. and, and having an outside person also give you feedback um, can help. So those are the sort of things you can do now. I also think, you know, making sure you publish, making sure you have a record of performance um, as, as a PhD. You know, when we look at CVs, one, you want to, you know, make sure that your CV looks professional. Mm -hmm. So I, I know that you guys offer um, some assistance on that. And I would certainly say that there are, you know, marked differences in, in the types of CVs that we get. So you want to have something that looks professional and having that assistance on what that might look like for corporate mm -hmm. is different than what it might look like for an academic CV. So using the, that um, internal uh, assistance to, to kind of refine um, is always a good thing. 
and, and highlight you know, the, the skill set that you have that would be applicable for an MSL role or a medical affairs role and, and try and draw that out, you know, highlight those, those things um, because you, know, you, you want to steer people uh, to those points. They may not see it in a three or four page CV if they're just kind of flipping through. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Absolutely.